Orna. Hi, Joanna. And hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Now, weirdly, <laughs> this is when we planned this, it was just before everything really kicked off. Um, so this week, we're doing productive self-publishing in challenging times. We're into the uh, fourth week of lockdown here in the UK. And uh, those of you around the world at the moment of recording uh, will be in similar situations, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, wherever you are, we hope you're safe. And uh, we will be talking today about some of the things going on and what you can do uh, during this time. But we're going to start <laughs> with a bit of an update. Orna, you you have some personal experience of of what's going on tell us what's been happening with you yeah well we you know tradition is that we open up talking about what we've kind of accomplished in the in the past month and i'm afraid i didn't accomplish very much because yeah i i actually went down with, with the virus which was not fun not pleasant and um, but i was very lucky i mean i got through it and still lingering a bit but generally just nothing that a week in bed didn't cure kind of thing so i'm uh, feeling pretty happy about that part um yeah how about you how's it going for you yeah well first up you know obviously those people listening i've i've been aware of you being sick and um my cousin's actually still in hospital with with the virus and so i was very worried about you and i know everybody listening uh who loves you and cares about you is would have been worried i've been worried so i'm really glad you're back <laughs> how could i do this on my own i mean oh, just... gosh. <laughs> <laughs> unthinkable uh, unthinkable uh but yeah, so from the perspective, I'm physically fine, but like many people, this is not a normal time. You know, the, the idea of, oh, well, you've got more time at home, so you can just write more and create, you know, oh, Shakespeare wrote whatever at home, and uh, what was it, Newton came up with something. You know, there's all this stuff going around about all the things you should be doing. But actually, this is a time of great anxiety and worrying about family and friends and the economy and everything. And so... We, we've we talked about creative routine only a couple of shows ago. And for me, my creative routine for my first draft writing is to go to the cafe at seven in the morning, put on my earphones, listen to a certain, you know, rain and thunderstorms. That's how I write. And then I do my business from home office. So technically I work from home, but I, I have a lot of stuff that is outside the house. So I found that I couldn't write anything for about three weeks. It's been, it was three weeks I put down, no, almost four weeks from putting down my novel uh, at sort of 35,000 words and just, and then I picked it up again this week uh, because finally a couple of things happened. I talked with a friend of ours, Mark McGuinness, and in talking to him, I realized that I was still in denial. I you know, my logical brain knows this is not just going to flip back to normal, but my creative brain, I think, was just thinking I'd be back at the cafe next week. So what was the point in coming up with a new routine? Because the old one works so well for me. But this week I was like, OK, I need to do something because this could go on for a long time. And regardless, I need to sort my life out. <laughs> so, so I've come up with a new uh, routine. I now do work in my house and I'm, I'm listening to the Game of Thrones soundtrack, which even if you haven't watched Game of Thrones is a great soundtrack. Um, no words, instrumental soundtrack. And uh, I'm back into it. So I've done eight and a half thousand words this week really happy but it was also weird because I'm a morning writer and then I've been feeling guilty because I meant to go walking with my husband in the morning on our one government mandated walk so I wanted to share with everyone this sort of guilt this anxiety this not knowing what to do with routine and I'm someone who should know what I'm doing right so I feel a bit pathetic oh come on <laughs> so, so but I know you've been hearing from a lot of ally members so tell me uh am I normal yeah. <laughs> what is everyone Everyone yes, else going yes. through. What's normal? <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> it's, it's the only word I hate. Um, but yeah, people are suffering from all sorts of feelings. And, uh, you know, great change takes time to sit in and enforced change is always challenging, especially for creative types who like to rebel. Um, and then, as you say, the whole, you know, denial, getting used to it, just, you know, changing a habit. There's um, habit energy builds up in the brain. It sets a little groove in place. And then especially if it's working well for you, it's very difficult to switch. So, 
yeah, we've been we've been getting um, uh, our our post bag, our, our digital post bag is bulging in Ally at the moment because of all the different kinds of situations that people are finding themselves in. So there are those people who just kind of jumped into it and thought, "Yay, this is everybody else in the world now behaves like me." Um, you know, I'm I'm. It doesn't look so different from how I normally live my life. And I'm going to use this time uh, very productively and off they went, but they were the exception. I think just the shock, the distress, the tragedies we're hearing about, the mounting death tolls alone, it's very, very difficult. And then the kind of 24 hour news cycle and wondering what the latest update is and all of that. So you can be at home in your own place, but your mind can be as busy as Grand Central Station kind of thing. And I think a lot of people, certainly for the first few weeks, were finding themselves there. And, and then this terrible cycle of guilt, you know, I should be, I should be, I should be doing this. And, you know, this is an opportunity. Everybody says it's an opportunity and so on. It's a global pandemic and we're all going to react in different ways. And, you know, this doesn't happen very often. Go with the flow, I think, is, is the message generally. But um, yeah, very, very kind of strange time. I do get the sense that people are beginning to settle back in. And, but of course, lots of people are also um, getting the virus and, mm. uh, you know, mild in, in all sorts of varieties of, of ways. And then unwell and wondering if they have the virus. And, you know, there's just so, so much going on for, for practically everybody. So um, what, what we are seeing, and um, there are a few kind of trends that, that we've noticed, which I think we talked about in a little while, but we are definitely seeing that people need to think about what they're doing at the moment. So a lot of people seem to be taking this opportunity to pivot, perhaps, or to really bed down into something. And we're hearing a lot of people saying, oh, I should have done A, B and C, you know, and I will be so much better prepared for this and other eventualities if I had. And so they're now using the this opportunity. It's almost like permission to step out of what you do normally, maybe, and set up something quite different. So, yeah, all all the different reactions. Oh, you're such a good teacher. You said permission, pivot and preparation. <laughs> so the three P's, which we'll be getting into uh, as we talk about that. Well prepared and prepared. Yeah, we don't um, just turn up here and chat, folks. <laughs> no, we really prepare. Um, OK, so uh, just to say that the Alliance does have a page full of lots of questions and answers and resources and help and stuff. So the short link to that is selfpublishingadvice.org forward slash COVID-19. And everyone should know how to spell that now. <laughs> So you can go and uh, find information and stuff on that page. So we're going to get into um, uh, the, the, the main stuff now. So we're going to start with, obviously, we want everyone to stay safe. We're not health professionals. We're not offering any health advice here. Please listen to your um, respective health agencies, wherever you are. Um, so we are going to talk about staying sane because, Orna, with your experience around meditation, free writing, I been journaling quite a lot and I've even been dictating because you know you get I get angry I've been angry you know these stages of grief that people go through the anger comes in the frustration the the grief as you say um the denial uh what are your thoughts on meditation free writing and finding a, a center I guess yeah so important to have what I think of as a, a sort of a creative flow practice of some kind and, um, you know, regular listeners will know I am death on the whole um, free writing and, and meditation. I really see them as, as imperative almost for creatives in terms of this quiet mind kind of thing. Um, getting that place where, you know, creativity always comes from a, a moment of silence, no matter, we, we may not realize that, but it's, we can see that in the brain as when we observe creative flow at play. So getting that place where you can, uh, as you say, stay centered enough to do what you want to do, to be able to, you know, put your intentions and your goals and, and get there. 
and and just to quiet the mind and stop thinking when it's full of thoughts about uh, coronavirus and uh, all the implications and there's no room for thoughts about what you need to be thinking about in your work so for me free writing and meditation uh, have always been and they are and they remain and have again helped me enormously in this time you know when i was sick as well they helped me to be patient to stay to realize that this too will pass all those mm -hmm. kinds of things and the benefits are just enormous from both of those practices so just to say that if anybody's listening and they feel like they need a little bit of support in that direction um, I, there are two Facebook groups, they're very small, they're private, they're not, you know, um, nothing to do with books or anything like that, but they're just a place where a few of us meet and uh, there's a flow practice um, Facebook group and also one where you can set your intentions um, at the beginning of the week and kind of come back in and record what you've achieved at the end of the week. And for some people, that's a kind of a nice stabilizer. So if, if that will be useful to anybody, again, the notes and um, the links will be in the show notes. So yeah, having a practice, whatever it may be, knowing what yours mm. is. Yours is journaling, right? Walking. Yeah, and I think it's it's important to remember that uh, you know being a being a writer and you writing being your default way of expression in the world. It doesn't mean that every word you write has to be published. You know, it can just be writing for your own um, mental health, <laughs> and I think that's really important at the moment. And we use writing to figure out what we actually think. And it was only when I was really writing about what I really want in my life and like you know i'm sure we've all had these thoughts well what if i do get the virus what if i die how angry will i be about what i didn't do <laughs> and what do i need to change so we're going to come back to the p for pivot in a minute but i do just want to um say that uh community is also important i think at the moment also for introverts we all have our online connections already in place and then suddenly everyone else is joining in like my family I am, i'm the eldest of five siblings and now it's suddenly we're all talking a lot more than we normally do, which is kind of crazy. So there's a lot more noise for introverts, which is strange because, you know, we're not so used to that. Um, but community is important. So uh, but just be careful of not overloading yourself, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, we set up uh, in our work very often um we control it but when family and friends come in it's quite difficult for us to actually control that in the same way so i think one of the one of the things that i find most effective is time blocking there are times for looking at whatsapp family groups and there are times when you just don't and <laughs> because if you do the day is gone so it, it, i think when there is no structure in the week when there is no form in the day you know when nobody is driving anything there isn't you know you can't even go to the cafe for a cup of coffee uh, it's ever more important to have that sense of, you know, to introduce that sense of structure for yourself. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about business and financials, um, because there is, uh, as well as health uh, issues, there's a lot of economic issues uh, that we're seeing all over the world. And this is, you know, a sort of unprecedented global impact on economies. And a lot of people are very worried, even if you're not affected physically, you're certainly worried, whatever age you are, it might be, you know, your job, it might be your pension, it might be your family, um, you know, and those of us who are authors, obviously worried about different income streams. Um, so let's talk about that. Because regardless of what's happening we're all affected like literally we're all affected so what are some of the questions or i guess uh, you know do, how do you want to do this because i've got some questions that people can um ask themselves yeah so let's perhaps consider those questions and um take them one by one yeah if you want to lead okay what they are. All right. So the first the first thing and this I kind of went through this a couple of weeks ago, Christine Catherine Rush posted an article about kind of business triage. And yes, we're in a good way. Like indie authors will come back to the publishing side in a minute. But the first question is, what can you turn off, shut down or put on hold so that um, you can uh, control your cash flow, you can stop spending money um, so that you can also just protect um, what you have. So for example, 
I cut down, like I had some recurring monthly payments on SEO tools. I got rid of that. I got rid of, um, I'm very lucky to be able to overpay my mortgage. So we cut cut that. It's, you know, you can take a mortgage holiday if your bank offers it. There's lots of ways that, that I even, this is kind of, it feels pathetic, but it was also quite significant for me is that I stopped my um, Nespresso coffee delivery. <laughs> <laughs> and, and bought some instant coffee which is kind of, I know that and, and I'm such a coffee addict so um that was quite big for me but that you know that's another 50 bucks a month or something um obviously I'm not going to the cafe and what's interesting is how much money we're not spending now we're all at home all the time but that is the first question the other thing is also c considering in your business what what is the fat in your business that has kind of grown? What are the all the things you're doing that perhaps you don't need to be doing? Um, so I really looked at my books and travel site, and because the travel industry is uh, down the tubes right now, I've pretty much decided to pivot that into just being a JF Pen um, fiction thing, and not to try and build a travel brand, a third brand. Um, at this time, so continue with the podcast, but really focus back on having it direct into my fiction, uh, which conserves time to do other things. And we'll come back to the second question in a minute. But Orna, what are some of the things um, that you've thought about shutting down or putting on hold or that you've heard from other people? Yeah, so I, I think it is very much about this idea of pivoting um, if it's appropriate and in some cases just um, cutting off. So like you, I've just noticed my software bills and, you know, things that I've been paying for that once were useful, not so useful or not so used anymore, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I think also then we've got the question of income you know of what can you do what what's particularly good forms of income that should be protected in this time because it cutting gets you so far but not very far but what a lot of people are kind of thinking about as well i think is how to and you know essentially get more money in the door and what we have witnessed very much in Ally is those people whose business was print based and physical, you know, outlet based. So the people with speaking gigs in the back of the room, a surprising number of fiction and poetry writers who sold a lot of books at the weekend markets. And um, this was something we didn't really know was a thing. And we knew a few people did it. Um, but um you know such people are found themselves in a very fragile sort of situation so a lot of people are saying i know i should have moved my business online more i should have set up that mailing list for example and um, and uh, selling direct having a transactional website this is something that's that's kind of really important you've you've been going heavily on the direct selling i know yeah. So uh, as you say, the second question is, well, how do I make more money more quickly? Because, you know, hopefully people have a bit of a cash buffer, but if you can bring in more cash more quickly, then you will be able to survive longer. And so I, but the, pro the problem with being writers, as most of, most of us, I know there's some amazing indie authors who write really fast, but most of us can't put out books very quickly. And even if you can put out a book really quickly, if you publish it on the stores, you're not going to get paid for 30 days 60 days whatever so it's not actually instant money unless you sell direct so what I did was uh, I use payhip.com I know people use different things um, but basically I sent out an email to my email list <laughs> saying 50% um, off everything ebooks and audiobooks if you buy direct from me with uh, a coupon um, and I made you know good four-figure income just straight away and what's amazing about selling direct is that money arrives in your bank account within 10 minutes and what it and i've had direct sales for a decade but i have never focused on them as my first order of book sales so it's actually changed my my focus because of course you also get an email address you get a physical address if you want to you suddenly know who's buying your books so it's much more powerful so i also uploaded a ton of other things so all my wide audio books i put up there as mp3 downloadable files uh, i put up more box sets nine book box set surprisingly fiction is selling for like 20 bucks 
So I just decided to go hard in that area. And the other thing I did is some more mini courses. So many authors teach, teaching is part of most authors sort of repertoire. And I did a couple of really fast mini courses um, uh, and put those up on Teachable. And you get that money, again, it's a bit delayed. Um, but again, it's quicker to do a course than it is to write a book for me, because I got the technical skills. So those were some things I did really fast. And that just made me feel so much better because I'm in control of that income. And I know while I write my books that I can continue to do those things, the direct sales, more mini courses, and they will protect the other side of things like the print stuff, which we're going to circle back to. So anything else that you um, know well, about or have heard? Yeah, I, I think what's fantastic, I think, you know, what's happened to you there is a is an example of what's happening to an awful lot of people. So, you know, with your books and travel, you have now decided to focus on JFM, which may ultimately be an opportunity. And we're going to talk um, a little bit later in the show about the opportunities that might be embedded in this thing. But again, you've had direct sales, uh, you know, the ability to do it for a long time, but that kind of going hard on it and really concentrating on it. So in a way, allowing this, these new conditions to kind of move you in directions that you know you want to be moving in anyway. And I know that one thing that people are going through at the moment is that they're feeling very confused about what they should do, what they shouldn't do. And, you know, I think the simple answer is let money lead. Do whatever is most lucrative. It's uh, it it is the sensible thing to do at this time. So what and that is that always translates back into what your readers want most or what they are willing to value most. You know they find most valuable in what you're putting out. So yeah, I think that simple decision to just follow that can help to see that maybe you're doing a lot of things in your business that are not actually business like and business related activities, which is completely fine. So long as you're not thinking that you are doing business when really you're doing something for yourself. Um, mm. So, you know, money is the great measure in that way and to allow it to speak to you and, um, yeah, let it let it lead you along the way kind of thing. Mm. And we should totally acknowledge that for many authors, services, uh, money for time is something that can make you money more quickly. So um, even, it, you know, and I think we also have to acknowledge that a lot of this stuff is not necessarily, you know, you might not love doing it. But as you say, at this, at this point, it's more about survival and making sure you can support yourself and your family um, during this during this time. Um, so the other thing would be to, yes, yeah, so services, a lot of authors do editing cover design oh what I, ha I have heard from a lot of editors there's a lot of editing work and there's a lot of book cover design work so people are working on their novels uh, possibly not the professional writers <laughs> but those people who may maybe have been furloughed or getting paid in other ways uh, are now working on their novels and their books um, but then the other thing is to think about um, as we mentioned what do you wish you had in place and what can you start building so one question um, we've got here uh, what if we don't have much of a mailing list and look to be honest this is true for most authors most traditionally published authors don't even have a mailing list um, so the big thing is to start one <laughs> uh, and to figure out, you know, there's only some basic things you have to do, which is figure out which service you want to use, uh, put it on your website, and then you have to put, get traffic into it. And how you get traffic is up to you. It could be a podcast, it could be a free book. Um, my perma free first in series stone of fire that still drives traffic to my email list every day. Um, Perma free still works if you're wide, people. <laughs> uh, so, you know, what else? So, for example, my friend Mark, our, our friend Mark, who I was talking to, said, Oh, I wish I'd got that audiobook done. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Me too, Mark. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what do you, what would you want to have in place? And then, if you think about why you want that in place, it's because that will be, would be earning you money, right? So, what are the, re what have you done that, why have you put that off? So, is that something? Thing that you should be looking at next um what else can you do and i i really because of course i do too much I, I totally acknowledge that um but when i looked at it the, the things are create intellectual property assets and of course license them uh and then e build an email list so you can reach people and then do one thing very very well 
like you have to do some marketing to drive people into that list. And for me, that really has to be podcasting is my number one thing. So how can I make those three things the best and everything else? You know, yeah, I still love Twitter. That's how we met like a decade ago, but it doesn't sell books for me anymore maybe it never did but it's how I can have community but I need to focus on the things that matter so people listening uh those are the two questions what can you cut down or shut down or put on hold to give yourself a bit more space and what can you do to make income uh so that you can do it from home and uh, that can keep you going and and what would what would you like to change as well I guess yeah. And I think Nadia's question is really fantastic. Um, she, she was the person who said, what if you don't have much of a mailing list? The, the point is to start where you are. So when, when you hear, you know, somebody like Joanna talking, don't forget that she has been putting this stuff in place for many, many years as, as we have. You know, it doesn't happen overnight for anybody. And if you're listening and you're thinking, oh, well, I don't have a mailing list and therefore that's not going to work for me. You actually have to have a mailing list. You really, really have to have a mailing list. So don't wait any longer. You've waited long enough. So get that one going. And um, also the transactional website is really is important for indie authors to have a transactional website. You are not like a, you might see a lot of author websites, you know, traditionally published authors. They they don't need one because they don't make any money if somebody buys a book on their website they it, it doesn't work for them it, it's going through their publisher in the same way as it would through a bookstore but for you it makes a huge difference not just in the fact that you get your money immediately and you get more money but also that you're helping to build every purchase builds your list as well and and your more engaged list because when you get into mailing lists you'll realize it isn't one list you have a number of different lists and um, you know that's that's something for another night um, yeah, I was going to say we might need to do a, a special edition on on email which would you uh -huh. know yeah, yeah because we okay. we are definitely one of the things that I'm doing is improving our lead magnets and stuff and realizing you know and also the funnels behind them you know what sort of communications people are receiving after they sign up and how they you know how that works together and all that kind of stuff so there's lots in your email list but it's really really important and i think it's it's so striking that whenever we come back to fundamentals which we do on this show it is the advanced show but every so often we just keep touching off these fundamentals and have been since we started this back in whenever the year dot um, back then we were talking about email lists oh, and no, intellectual no. property building more assets building you know getting more stuff out there doing doing more uh, with your stuff and having a premium product and that is really the three-legged stool and then your whatever you're going to do to market and uh, stop trying to be everywhere focus on one thing work out how that one thing so twitter can sell books but only if you're very very strategic about it not if you're just mm. posting links or turning up for chats instagram mm. can sell books but again you have to have an actual plan you have to understand how it works how the how the reader's mentality works so yeah we'll get off that mm. one now but important stuff yeah, and just to say, um, draw, uh, books to read, books to read .com, Um, If you sell wide, you should be using their links, and it gives you one link that will link everywhere. They now include PayHip and Authors Direct, which is uh, selling audiobooks um, direct with Find Your Way Voices. So uh, that's great. That's new, come out of the last few weeks. Thanks, guys, um, at Draft to Digital. Okay, so we're going to move into the biggest impact of the coronavirus, which is really on print. And the publishing industry is heavily dependent on print. And I think they are really finding this right now. Um, it is uh, affecting a lot of people. So um, Orna, do you wanna start with some of the impacts we've seen? We're not gonna tell you everything. We're just gonna pick a few things that have been interesting. Yeah, there's just too much to talk about, but essentially we're seeing a, an industry in you know, heading for a crisis, really. Um, at the moment, we're down hot sheet. Um, Jane Friedman's wonderful news sheet came out today, and she's telling us, um, quoting public, 
publishers lunch that the market is down almost 10 percent 8.9 percent overall but i think we're going to see an awful lot more than that of that mix though adult titles are down 26 percent already so that's the people that most of us are, are kind of writing for and the biggest losers are adult fiction bestsellers and um, travel books and business books now stress we're talking print here so mm. um, we're not talking. So do take a look at hotcheappub.com. Um, it is a paid service, but that newsletter, if you're serious about um, indie publishing, is is really worth worth the investment. Um, so a lot of independent bookstores look like they're going to to go um, to the wall uh, in this. They're going to find it very difficult um, to survive. But um, in addition to the indie bookstores, there are concerns about Barnes and Noble in the US because we um, heard that they are not actually paying um, at the moment. It sounds like there are cash flow issues and they have been in trouble for quite a long time. James Daunt, the guy who's responsible for turning Waterstones around, was brought in um, last year to turn BNN around. But perhaps now with this, that won't be something that he's going to be able to do. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so we should say that we um, draft a digital reported that Barnes and Noble is is delayed in paying for February sales. Uh, we don't know there are cash flow issues. Um, it is Thank just. You. It is, the Bible. <laughs> it is just it is just something we are thinking about um but the, yeah the only thing we've had is delayed payments and but we, you know there, there is a history of what happens when people delay payments <laughs> to creditors um yeah. but some of the positive i mean there are positive things um things like city lights bookstore in san francisco was saved with the crowdfunding um you know fundraise lots of people loving their independent stores james patterson's got a thing in america lots of things going on so i i think we see a lot of positive energy towards um bookstores that people love but potentially the big chains uh, won't be supported in that way and what we've seen out of italy which is obviously italy is in front of everyone else in terms of their shutdown They've seen a 25 to 50 percent drop as reported by the bookseller. And this is to do with physical bookstores being shut, but also the delivery. So I don't know about everybody listening, but I've certainly cut down on my deliveries because I don't particularly want delivery drivers having to do stuff. Um, there's illness in warehouses in some countries like France. Um, Amazon has been told not to deliver anything that's non-urgent um so that will depend on the country because that's certainly not true in the us but we are a global organization and that things are different in every country for example i've heard from south african uh, writers they're very locked down um in south africa so lots of different things going on um publishers like lonely planet who are a travel publisher have shuttered operations in melbourne and london libraries have reportedly stopped ordering print books moving to digital and we'll come to good news about that in a minute um but certainly you know the the sort of is this the end of print in libraries is interesting but what we are seeing on positive side is people moving to consuming more ebooks and more digital audio so we're seeing growth in that area um, for both libraries and for um, online sales so positive side of things Orna yes um libraries are you know an opportunity that indies are becoming much more aware of and what's happening a lot with with the virus is that it's accentuating trends that were already in place so you know print was already slightly in trouble not that print books are ever going to go away but that whole um and bookstores i don't think are ever going to go away and i do believe that the indie uh, bookstore sector will live again that you know there is a need for that but um that's beside the point li libraries are now switching to digital um purchases which is not switching to but they're adding them in and at the moment they're closed for print and so they are um, very active in this area and that's really good for us um so if you haven't members downloaded your how to get your book into libraries now would be the time to do that and again the the link will be in the sh in the show notes and um, so 
I think it's really accentuating that trend where more librarians were becoming aware. At first in libraries, ebooks were a big no-no uh, for a long time. So, you know, print centric um, physical outlets have been the slowest for obvious reasons to move with the digital development. But now we're seeing that um, it was going to happen anyway, but what this is doing is, is really speeding things up um, in that way. So for authors and, and for the people who are buying our books. So again, the message is very much get on your digital outlets, find out the ways in which you can distribute because the first point in terms of, dis of getting your uh, books out there is to ensure that you are uh, widely distributed and that libraries can access your work and that you know how to bring it to their attention and so on. Yeah, and we should say on print, uh, just to be clear, Ingram Spark, uh, who sponsors this podcast, has not uh, closed down. I have been in one of their warehouses. There's very few uh, people <laughs> in there. So I imagine and they're all uh, di distanced. <laughs> so uh, Ingram Spark is still printing and delivering uh, print books uh, to yes. the various chains. And that's important in, with, in relation to something that you might be hearing about Amazon not supplying um, books because it's slightly different. A, a lot of what people are talking about is bulk deliveries to their warehouses. The warehouses are being um, kept for essential items. But of course, Amazon, like the rest of the world, uses Ingram Spark to actually fulfill their print. And so POD um, from Amazon, there are delays, but that is, they are two completely different things. So um, I'm hearing wild things um, talk about Twitter, you know, going around saying to people, no, actually, that's not right, because um, people get, you know, it's Chinese whispers, they hear one thing mm. and, and, you know, Amazon are forcing people to buy secondhand books is something that's going around on Twitter at the moment. No, they're not. <laughs> they're really not. Um, no. <laughs> but this is about essential services and warehouses being kept for that. So um, if you were somebody who, and again, we were very surprised to find how many indies do actually supply their books in that way. They do a consignment print and then they send bulk um, book orders around the place, including to Amazon and use Amazon in that way. It's a far less effective way to use Amazon. Um, you get, you know, it's much more troublesome paperwork wise and everything. So now might be the time to switch to the KDP print model using KDP print and Ingram Spark together to maximize your reach. So yeah. Wanda has asked me to repeat a website, but I'm not sure which one because we were throwing out a lot uh, of them. So yeah, we're throwing out a lot, me. but I believe I believe it's the hotsheetpub.com. So the oh, hot yeah. sheet published by Jane Friedman, which has a lot of information about the publishing industry for indies and authors. Uh, so hotsheetpub.com, which will be in the show notes as well. So um, in saying that, uh, absolutely, we think it's a difficult time. It is a difficult time for a lot of people, traditionally published authors, um, there's you know a lot of difficulties <laughs> on that side but if you are in control of your intellectual property and you can publish digitally and you can do all this stuff then um, you know things are much more in your control uh, so let's pivot to uh, what opportunities there might be and also how things might change uh, in the next few months because of this so we've talked about some things like you're saying acceleration of library adoption of digital might be one thing I also think that we're going to see more traditionally published authors come into uh, independent publishing because they're going to see the problems I mean the, the, the stats on Italy were some crazy number of books that just won't be published the the publishers will keep the contract the book will just not happen and those authors are left orphaned by this whole they won't get their books back but you know they got paid already but they won't see their book out there so I think we're going to see authors coming over to indie because of this um what else do you think Orna what else will we see I think in terms of, of thinking about the opportunities that might be inherent here. So you are at home and, you know, you are um, in, in a place where you can actually, in a sense, draw a line around it and think about what is central and core to your business. So doing the things as we were talking about that you may have been putting off, creating more. What books could you write now? What could you turn into a course? Um, 
your own learning, it's a very good time to think about um, what you, where you might lack skills as a publisher, um, as a business owner, and to upskill in those ways in this time. Um, everything is going to be more digital, more online, more reliant on tech. And so it really is important. And I speak as somebody who is not technologically <laughs> enhanced, to put it mildly. Um, it's really important just to learn how to do those things that really do make a difference to your bottom line. Um, so I think we will find that a lot of what used to happen probably won't happen in future and things that we haven't thought about are going to come in and um, definitely at the simplest level the trend towards digital is accelerating already and that will continue um, yeah I um, think also the uh, what's interesting is a lot of people who've never used Skype or Zoom or any of these online things are suddenly using online technology to connect and do online uh, things like this. And uh, so what I think we're going to see is an acceleration of online events, digital streaming from conferences. If they do go back to being live, I'm sure some of them will. But also I've been very pleased um, to start getting paid to do things like this. So maybe all authors will get paid to do more more online conferences and it will actually make more money even if you get paid like a hundred bucks to do an hour's talk you're if you do it from home and you don't have to travel you're actually going to make more money um, doing that so I'm really hoping that the technology that is being developed at speed will turn into much more effective ways of speaking at conferences throughout the world and speaking to readers groups. And, you know, imagine how many readers and schools that people can reach once this technology is widely adopted, which it will be <laughs> by the end of this situation. So definitely if you haven't upskilled into this type of presentation, you need to get used to it. Uh, you need to think, well, do I need to learn to speak better? Do I need to practice? Do I need to just know my stuff so that I can speak extemporaneously <laughs> without being completely freaked out, which to be fair, we all are at the beginning. But these are the types of things that will definitely accelerate. I mean, I'm thrilled that like the Hay Festival is going to go online, stuff like that. The, we, the, yeah, because we love access as well, as well as yeah. what we can do ourselves. We're going to have access in, to everything. And it's not likely that they're going to go back to nothing and to just being purely mm. physical ever again because once people see what sense it makes and how how much more people you can reach when you're online then it very quickly becomes a no-brainer so um from that point of view i think things are very hopeful for those who are going to do the work uh, to get on board and, and to make it happen it doesn't have to be video or even audio but it has to be something online and it has to work and if it is video or audio it needs to be good. You need to kind of work out how to link it in with what you're doing already. And you cannot think this stuff out in advance. I think that's the most important thing to say about all of this. You can have your idea and have a general idea of what would work. As we said earlier in the show, let money make some decisions for you. OK, there's money in that. There's no money in that. I'm going to do this one. And you can have some sort of a sense of that. But really, you can't know for sure until you try it. And the idea is you try everything in the spirit of experimentation, exploration, and then from the feedback that you get in terms of what you're enjoying, what's working, what's going well, you just get better and better at it. So, um, it, yeah, it's a time to, to think in a, in a way if we if we turn it into that, it could be the time that you look back and say, oh, gosh, you know, that was where it all started for me. Yeah, well, let's let's end with kind of a reflection. Um, you know, I I'm very much memento mori. You know, remember remember we will die. It, you know, that's part of our how we think about life. Um, and you know, I love graveyards and all that stuff. So uh, you know, what, what that is the biggest question. You know, of course we are going to die at some point. Hopefully not this month of COVID. <laughs> and Orna didn't. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's um the question is you know what are the things that you you do really really want to achieve and then how do you put in place the things around that so you know I when I really thought about it I really do want to win an award I really do for my fiction like it's 
it's one thing I want. And uh, so how am I going to do that? I have to become a better writer and I have to submit my work to awards. <laughs> <laughs> and there's only a couple of awards that I'm interested in, obviously, and they're not just any award, not just here's a, here's a good gold star. Um, you know, that's something that I really want to do. So that I need to focus on that. I need to get back to doing better <laughs> with yeah. my fiction so um Orna while you've been sick have you been thinking about anything yeah I mean one of my things is probably getting more centered and it's that whole thing of what you were just saying there a moment ago what are the things you really want to do and really want to leave behind and I think this is a problem for indies because we have so much control and freedom um, over what we do, that maybe we're our own worst enemies in a way. We want to do a lot of things and we want to do them all at the same time. Um, and well, I shouldn't say we, I should only say me because that's definitely me. So in terms of being a good publisher, it's very much about focus and it's very much about sending out consistent messaging. And, you know, for me, it's at the moment, always wanting to be a better writer, always working on that always and always will be and I think that's one of the reasons we all write is because it's never there it's always this elusive thing that's disappearing over the uh, over the horizon um, in many ways though it seems much more challenging at the beginning becoming a better publisher is an easier task there is a kind of um, a box you can draw around that and there are certain things that if you're not doing them you're not really a good publisher. So for me, um, as I was lying there with my head spinning, I, it was about, you know, they were the thoughts about becoming a better publisher. And mm. so that's my job for the rest of the year and closing down certain boxes and maybe throwing out some things and uh, getting getting more core, I think, about what's really important. And I haven't actually fully worked it out yet, but I know it's something about the conditions here have pushed me to do some things that I have been resisting doing for a very long time. Yeah, so let's take that uh, as a positive step um, amongst all this stress and concern. Let's look at this in a positive light. We'll, we'll always try and stay <laughs> stay looking forwards uh, into the future because if, you know, this will, this too shall pass as, as they say. So, um, I guess we next month we're planning to do the topic we were going to do this month. We're going to talk about different tools that we use in our writing and publishing business, um, useful tools and software and potentially services. And we'll be talking about um, some, you know, because these things change all the time, but sort of where we are in our current business models, the different tools we use. So uh, in closing, or anything else? No, I think that topic will feed very well into what we've been talking about today and hopefully help people across the line in terms of um, getting in some core stuff that really does make a difference in terms of being more productive as a writer and being that better publisher we were talking about. So um, yeah, um, there's nothing else to say except really, you know, hang on in there, <laughs> stay, stay writing stay publishing, stay connected, you know, Ally is there. If you're having issues and jump into the member forum, talk about what's coming up for you. We concentrate very much on publishing questions in the forum, but it's always there also. If you are running into difficulty, uh, finding great resistance or block or anything like that. Um, so yeah, do stay connected and do ask for what you need. It's it's a good time for you to try and connect more deeply. So if you need help and support to do that, then just ask. Fantastic. Well, happy writing, everyone. Happy publishing. Yes. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye.